Welcome to Control System Lecture Series. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about root lockers. This is one of the important concepts in control systems. Okay, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about what is root lockers and what is the procedure for constructing the root lockers. Okay, these are the important concepts we are going to discuss in this lecture. That is, first one is the concept of root lockers and second one is the procedure for constructing the root locus. Coming to concept of root locus, root locus is the locus of the roots of a characteristic equation of a closed loop system in S plane by varying system parameter from 0 to infinity. That is nothing but by varying one of the system parameter from 0 to infinity, we are going to draw the locus. We are going to draw the locus of the roots of a characteristic equation in S plane. In S plane. That is nothing but root locus. Here, generally we are going to consider open loop gain value is the variable parameter. Means we are going to vary the open loop gain. That is k value from 0 to infinity. We are going to draw the root locus. Means by varying this value. By varying open loop gain value from 0 to infinity, we are going to get the locus. That is nothing but root locus. And it is a graphical representation. Root locus is the graphical representation for finding the absolute stability and relative stability of a system. Okay, this is the use of the root locus. Means by using root locus, we can find out stability of a system that is absolutely stable or relative stable of the system. And root locus is a symmetric about real axis. Okay, root locus is a symmetric about real axis. This is very important bit in any competitive exam. Okay, root locus is a symmetric about real axis. This is about root locus. Coming to rules for constructing the root locus. Okay, totally we are having seven rules in order to construct the root locus. Okay, in that first one is first we have to identify the open loop poles and open loop zeros by using the given transfer function. Okay, after finding open loop poles and open loop zeros, we are going to indicate these poles and zeros on S plane. Okay, in the S plane, we are going to represent these two things open loop poles and open loop zeros. Coming to second rule, find the number of root locus branches. In the root locus, the root locus branches starts at the open loop poles and ends at the open loop zeros. Suppose consider n is the number of root locus branches, n is equal to p, n is equal to p, that is nothing but number of root locus branches is equal to number of open loop poles if p is greater than z, that is if number of poles are greater than number of zeros that time the number of root locus branches is equal to number of poles. Similarly, n is equal to z. That is nothing but number of root locus branches is equal to z if number of poles are less than number of zeros. Okay, that is the mathematical representation is n is equal to p. That is number of root locus branches is equal to number of poles if p is greater than z. Similarly, number of root locus branches is equal to number of zeros if p is less than z. Okay, this is the, these are the conditions for finding the number of root locus branches which are going to start at open loop pole and ends at the open loop zeros. Okay, coming to third rule, identify and draw the real axis root locus branches. Okay, that is if odd number of open loop poles and zeros exist to the right side of any point on the real axis, then that point is on the root locus branch. That is nothing is there. Consider S plane. This is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. And consider some poles and some zeros present on this real axis. Suppose consider any point, any testing point in between this zero and this pole. Suppose consider testing point is here. Now identify number of poles and number of zeros to the right side of this point means this side. 
if number of poles and zeros to the right side of this point are odd that time this branch becomes the root locus branch okay in this case we are having only one zero so this branch becomes the root locus branch again we have to consider testing point in between these two poles okay suppose here consider testing point now identify the number of poles and zeros to the right side of this this point means in this side okay here we are having one pole and one zero so the number of poles and zeros are even so this is not a root locus branch okay like that we have to identify and draw the real axis root locus branches on the real axis okay coming to next rule that is find the centroid and angle of asymptotes we have to find out centroid and asymptotes here asymptotes gives the direction of root locus branches and the intersection point of these asymptotes is nothing but centroid okay the formulas for finding the number of asymptotes are that is p minus z number of asymptotes is equal to difference between number of poles and number of zeros okay these are the formulas for finding centroid as well as asymptotic angles that is centroid is denoted by sigma that is equal to summation of real part of finite open loop poles minus summation of real part of finite open loop zeros by number of poles and number of zeros by using this formula we can find out the intersection point that is nothing but centroid similarly the formula for finding angle of asymptote is theta is equal to 2q plus 1 into 180 by number of poles minus number of zeros here q indicates the difference between that is this is the range for q starting from 0 0 to p minus z minus 1 okay by using these two formulas we are going to find out centroid and angle of asymptotes okay coming to next rule okay find out breakaway point and break-in point here breakaway point exists between two poles and break-in point exists between two zeros okay that is if there is a real axis root locus branch between two open loop poles then there may there is a concept of breakaway point similarly if there is a real axis root locus branch between two open loop zeros that time we will get the concept of break-in point okay this is the process of finding breakaway point and break-in point okay coming to next rule find the angle of departure as well as angle of arrival okay here we are going to get the concept of angle of departure and angle of arrival due to the presence of complex conjugate poles and zeros complex conjugate poles and zeros if complex conjugate poles are present that time we are going to get the angle of departure if complex conjugate zeros are present that time we are going to get the angle of arrival concepts that is angle of departure and angle of arrival can be calculated at complex conjugate open loop poles and complex conjugate open loop zeros respectively okay that is the formula for finding angle of departure pi d is given as pi d is equal to 180 minus pi similarly the formula for angle of arrival pi a is pi a is equal to 180 plus pi here pi a is the representation of angle of arrival pi d is the representation of angle of departure here we have to find out this pi value the formula for finding this pi value is equal to summation of angle due to all remaining poles minus summation of angle due to all remaining zeros okay with respect to remaining poles and remaining zeros we are going to find out the pi value after finding pi we have to substitute in these two formulae angle of departure and angle of arrival then we are going to get these values angle of departure value and angle of arrival values okay coming to last rule while constructing the root locus that is find the intersection points of the root locus branches with an imaginary axis means here root locus branches may cross the imaginary axis on the s plane okay this is our imaginary axis okay root locus branches may cross this imaginary axis now we are going to find out this crossing point that is nothing but intersection point okay for calculating the intersection point we are going to consider the route rh criteria that is route array is nothing but rh criteria okay by considering route 
Routh Arvis criteria, we are going to consider the auxiliary equation. Okay, by using this auxiliary equation, we are going to find out the S value. This S value indicates the imaginary value. That is, S is nothing but J omega. Here, imaginary axis is nothing but J omega axis. Okay, from this S value, we are going to get one value. That value represents the intersection point with imaginary axis. Okay, this is the process for drawing the root locus for any type of system in order to find out the relative stability and absolute stability. In the coming tutorial, we are going to discuss about problems by using these rules or we are going to construct the root locus for different types of systems.